We had a a defining moment in our marriage yesterday. You and I. <laughs> oh, I see. That one caught me off guard. <laughs> that that's yes. the one. No, so my wife was laying on the couch, and I noticed the lights just turned off. I was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" And I, I'm my first thought seriously was something broke, something, yeah. something, whatever. And she goes, no, no, no. I just used that app you showed me, and I, I opened it up, and I saw the two light bulbs, and I turned them off because I wanted them off. Your wife used technology. She, I give her a lot of crap for being shiny side down on the CD. It's she, <laughs> Technology's not her forte. She has strengths in many other areas. Yeah. Um, no, my wife is exactly the same, I, um, yeah. and she, to this day, has not used the Philips Hue app for anything. Yeah, well, this is because it's in the HomeKit app. And it's all oh. there. Every everything, well, just about everything we have, other than the Nest mm -hmm. cameras and the thermostat, are right there. It's like it's a little dashboard for your house. It was, and she didn't even log into her phone. She just swiped up, pulled up the system tray thing, whatever the hell it's called in iOS. Yeah, hit yeah. the little thing because it, it's was, there, right? It, yeah, it was right. beautiful. <laughs> it was amazing. Let's see, where is the thing? Yeah, that's right. Right, the little house. Yeah. Oh, yeah look at that. Yeah, you could put all your. Yeah, I guess I could use there. this to turn stuff off. Uh, yeah, it's like a little control pad. Nice. Yeah. And speaking of um, other dramas, uh, mm -hmm. if you will, I did not. My credit card so far did not get charged for that thing that Chamberlain sent to my house that is now sitting upstairs, still in the box. Um, okay. The charge sat pending for several days. It is now and then no gone? longer there. Yeah, it's just well, gone. Wonder if they're just going to let you have it. I will uh, I will keep it boxed up. I mean, I've got my brothers at my house, and if my brother ever needs that one back, I'll give it back, then unbox this thing, but it will sit in the uh, wherever. Hmm. If you yeah. want, you can send them my Apple TV, you know? They won't get the joke, but... <laughs> well, the problem was you'd send that to me, and I'd probably just keep it. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> I, could, I could find a use for that. Actually, what I really want now is a 4K TV, because we don't have 4K TVs in our house. Oh. oh, well, this is a good time to buy because they're really inexpensive. Yeah, I, well, this is this is part of the conversation. I was like, you know, how how much would it cost to go get a fifty-five inch four K TV? And we need we need absolutely nothing else. I don't need Wi Fi. I don't need anything. It needs an <laughs> HDMI port to connect to the stupid Apple TV box, and sure. they are no well, joke. Well, you want H, you want the HDR, obviously. And well, yeah, I mean, a, I want HDR. Uh, 4K. Do you do um, sound through the TV, or do you have like a sound system that's no? Separate? We just do sound through. the sound through yeah. the tv so you just need um, the one and if we're going to do anything i'd buy sonos beam which again only needs hdmi hdmi yeah. arc which is these yeah. are all pretty basic features and i was looking and there's they're like 300 bucks like starting price now granted that's like that's no i know but you're talking like 500 dollars for a really good one yeah you know? and the the I mean, tv it's, that it's is up there that is a 52 inch samsung granted it is nine years old i paid over mm -hmm. two grand for that thing well, that TV that's behind you that we bought, I want to say, two and a half years ago almost, yeah. uh, was over $1,000. I want to say it was $1,100, mm -hmm. 1200 bucks, somewhere around there. And it's it's a beautiful TV. Oh, yeah. I this mean, is the bought, nicest we, TV in our house right here. We bought one for ourselves. Like <laughs> we problem. have one. Yeah, we have one in our living room because I, I actually brought my daughter and wife in and said, you need to look at this yeah. and see what TV could look like, <laughs> you know. The thing is, is like... I, I wonder if I bought a nicer TV, if I'd watch more TV, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Although golf season is coming up, and I will tell you, nothing looks better on a TV than golf. I don't care. You can, I will maybe BBC Earth Planet or Planet Earth 2.0 or whatever they called it might look better, but golf on a 4K sure. TV looks incredible. I'm just, I'm just. I, I'm, yeah. I can't dispute it. I don't know. It's pretty. It's pretty. <laughs> Unlike you, um, it's just pretty. Yeah. Or as I call it, a perfectly good waste of, no, a waste of perfectly good farmland. Yeah, some of them are. Well, Cincinnati's pretty hilly, and some of the golf courses are. Although I haven't, I didn't golf nearly enough last year. I'm hoping to remedy that this year, although I suspect that's not going to be the case. Yeah. It always, it always sounds good on paper, like, oh, every Tuesday morning I'm going to go out, which I did do for a while, and then it just kind of stopped working when my daughter had needs, like, being watched. Yeah. And we we did this two two years in a row, but in the winter, this is several years ago. Our kids were little at the time. Mm -hmm. My wife and I would take the middle of the day off, 
and we lived about 10 minutes away from a very small mountain. It's not even a mountain. It's a hill, but they had a ski area there. And yeah. uh, it was a great place to learn. It's where I learned to ski when I was a kid. But um, you, you could buy this winter-long pass, It was, just, but it was only during the week. Like it, You couldn't go there on the weekends, but you wouldn't want to. It was crowded. Yeah. So we would be like one of th- or two of three or four people on the, on the hill. We'd ski for mm-hmm. two hours, eat lunch, like grab a hamburger or whatever they had there. Yeah. We did this like every day. You know, but we only did it for two years. I don't quite remember what the situation. It was probably one of those deals where, like, our youngest kid had gotten out of daycare or something and was yeah. actually at a school, and it was known to be like, you know, they were going to be gone. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but it was it was pretty great. It's cool doing stuff like that. Yeah. So, actually, this morning I went to my daughter's school with her. Actually, my wife came too, and they had a coding camp. These yeah. It was pretty neat, actually. They're the you little... refer to it as a Q coding camp. What does that mean? Well, that was, wasn't supposed to be Q. It was supposed to be A, but I was trying to type oh. and whatever. Gotcha. But So there are these little Ozobot things. It's called an Ozobot. It's basically a little robot with a light sensor underneath, and there's just basic paper, uh, and there's black lines on them, and then there's <laughs> spacing where you can put three colored dots. And depending on the color of the dots that you put... Yeah. We'll tell the robot to turn left, right, straight, speed up, spin, or whatever. And so what they do is they have little courses on these paper. And yeah. then you're supposed to put the correct sequence of dots. will then drive the robot correctly along the path. It's kind of neat. This is, yeah, so uh, vi- for young kids especially, uh, the visual style mm-hmm. of programming is super important. It's uh, Visual stuff is important just for learning in general. Like I, I read something recently that... If you want to remember something, draw a picture. No, don't like take a note, but like actually draw something. Like it's, yeah, like if you something need to remember about, a pig, I, I have a perfect. Yeah, right, you have, we have a perfectly good picture of something else on our refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> draw um, a dog or some <laughs> nebulous uh, yeah, animal. Yeah, right. But um, uh, this is too sophisticated for your daughter now. She's young. But um, if she was a little older or when she gets a little older, the, the uh, Apple has a virtual version of that on iPads called Swift Playgrounds. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you're describing, except it's, you know, it's graphical and it's on the screen and it's about turning robots and going over certain things, whatever. But yep. it is that kind of thing. And it's um, it's kind of a neat way to learn at any age, I guess. But, um, yeah. you know, when you're just starting with something. So that's cool. The, that whole, they're uh, the whole premise for this was to try to teach pattern recognition yeah. and um, like systematic input, essentially. So you, you got to be did... careful because uh, if your daughter is shown to have any aptitude of this, they're going to pull her out of the class. The next thing you know, she's going to be dropping bombs on Kabul or something, you know, like, <laughs> that, like an that Enders went game thing. really, really downhill quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I think we got a ringer over here. <laughs> let's, let's bring her out to you know, Nevada or something. <laughs> anyway, speaking of going to Nevada, which I'm not going to be doing or hopefully you're not. But uh, I believe, Paul, you purchased some plane tickets yesterday. Did you not? Yeah. Um, you know, Microsoft invited us to go to uh, Mobile World Congress to see whatever this thing is, which is widely presumed to be an announcement about HoloLens because Alex Kipman's going to be there. That makes mm-hmm. sense to me. I'm kind of hoping there's more to it than just that. You know, mm-hmm. um, I've signed up for Mobile World Congress in the past and I've never actually gone, which is weird because I love Spain <laughs> and I love yeah. Barcelona in particular. And we've talked about it. Um, one year I was in Madrid just coincidentally when the show was happening in Barcelona. And I ended up meeting someone who was, had gone to Spain for that show in Madrid. It was kind of a weird coincidence, but I never went. So Mm -hmm. I'm excited to go. Um, I I am going to go and we got cheap tickets. You know, um, we had like some points or credits or whatever on Norwegian. So my, my ticket was kind of the normal $450, $500. Which hold on. That is, that is a very good price in itself. Oh, for Europe. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But my wife's ticket was even better. It was under three hundred dollars. Oh my god! Uh, in fact, it was. I think with the credit, it was probably like two seventy or something. Like, I mean, it's kind of incredible. Now, granted, it's on Norwegian, <laughs> so right. uh, that airline might not exist in a month. I mean, we'll see what happens. But, um, uh, but it's nonstop from Newark, which is incredible. The long flights, though. It's like uh, almost eight hours on the way out and almost seven on the way back. But. Um, but you know, Barcelona and we're only going to be there a couple of days and I'm going to be, um, I have stuff to do. I mean, so Sunday night is the Microsoft event and then I'm going to have to go to the show in some capacity, but, uh, we should have a couple of days. We can, um, you know, we'll, we've been mm-hmm. to Bar- home swap to Barcelona twice. We've been there, uh, two other times. So, I mean, we love Barcelona. So it yeah. was it kind of, we literally sat down and thought like, well, bec- we would have come a day earlier, but Norwegian doesn't fly like Thursday night to like on this route for some reason. So, hmm. Uh, or maybe it was Friday night. 
in this, it must have been Friday night, whatever the day was, but we couldn't we couldn't go a day early because we would have done one more day. But um, and then the other trick, of course, is finding an affordable hotel in a city that is having a major conference. Yep. Um, and there's a oh, geez, you know the 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 chain of hotels that owns Novotel, which is called is it I think it's called Acor. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Like yep. Um, they own so you've seen these in Europe. It's like it's called Ibis or Ibis yes. or whatever. It's I B I S yep. whatever. Um, and it's up. It's actually like a block away from the first home swap we did in Barcelona. So we know the neighborhood. Hmm. And it's a probably a twenty minute walk if you wanted to walk uh, from there to uh, Plaza de Catalunya, which I think is where Mobile World Congress is, or at least it's where it was. It might be in a different place now, but. Anyhow, yeah, so I'm excited to do that, even though it's going to be like a super quick trip. But um, I, I mean, this is kind of a weird way to tell you this. It doesn't matter. But um, I like to have I like to have a year like looking at a year and know that I'm going sure. to be travel internationally. Yep. Like I we've talked about this. I try to schedule 30 days or a month or whatever every year where I'm out of the country. Mm -hmm. And a big chunk of that is always our home swap, which is usually three weeks long. Um, and so this year that we, we're actually swapping with, uh, Stephen Bink again. This will be the third time we've done that. He lives outside of Amsterdam now. He mm -hmm. used to live right in Amsterdam. So we bought Not a, a bad house. Not a place to go. Yep. But the, the weird thing is I'm also going to Amsterdam, well, Amsterdam area before that, uh, because Mary Jo and I are going out to a show in June. And I'm never going to remember the name of the town. It's not Harlem, but it's, it's actually in the opposite direction of Harlem, but it's actually kind of close to where Stephen Bink lives, but I'm it's actually now Utrecht, uh, is it? No, it's not some. Oh, sorry. You've never heard. No one has ever heard of the place. It's not a famous. It's Amaze, not a, Pennsylvania. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those places. <laughs> but it is. It's not anything you know uh, that anyone would have heard of. But mm. it doesn't matter. It's outside. It's it's um. It's probably a twenty minute train ride to Amsterdam. So it's weird because we. I was like, of course I want to do this, and then, <laughs> um, I was my wife was going to come and blah blah blah. But now we're home swapping there, so it's like, oh, well, maybe we should save some money. It would be stupid to go out there uh, for her to go out there, you know. But I'll still go. But it's like uh, unless something changes, like most of my international travel this year is all going to be in <laughs> like the Netherlands, yeah, uh, which is fine. I love it. I love it there. But um, you know, and I I, I don't know if I'm going to do this, but I got invited to go to Dubai as well, yeah, uh, for possibly the third or fourth time in my life. <laughs> like, um, and I don't know, I don't know this organization. I don't know what I uh, what they would require of me. I don't know that I want to be in a plane for 27 hours. Yeah, uh, so we'll see, but. That would be weird, <laughs> you know, like, um, I don't know, maybe. You'd fit in well in Dubai. Did I ever tell you my original Dubai story? This might be of some interest. Nope. Uh, in the fall, uh, well, it would have been early winter of, uh, let's see, 2012, after Windows 8 was launched. I had gone to the, the Windows 8 launch in the Netherlands and spoke there. No, I'm sorry, in New Zealand. <laughs> I went to the Netherlands and, for Windows 7. Um so it was like a really big trip. Mm -hmm. And they almost didn't let me into the country because my passport was going to expire within three months or so. Like it was, it's November, it would have been November. So it would have been like almost two months, two and a half months. And they, there was actually some discussion in customs. Like when I was trying to get in, they brought over someone, they brought over someone else. And I was like, what's going on? And they're like, your passport's expiring. And I'm like, I, I'm not staying here. I'm going <laughs> to be here for like three days. Anyway, they let me in. It was fine. But um, I got an invitation to go to Dubai from Microsoft, uh, possibly for a Windows 8 launch related event that was, I think, in December that year. And I jumped on it and I had to go do this emergency passport renewal thing, which cost extra and you had to go in person and I did it and it was in Boston, whatever. And I got a new passport right away. And then I was like, you know what, I'm exhausted from traveling. But here's the reason I tell the story. The reason this is kind of weird is, you know that Steve Insanofsky was fired from Microsoft. Um, right, well, before Windows 8 launched, and then he stayed mm -hmm. through the launch, and then he left in, I want to say it was early November. He went on that trip. Oh, He was actually on the trip. And I don't know how or why, you know, because I didn't go. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure it was pretty incredible. Um, he probably would have murdered me in my sleep if I was on the plane with him. But um, it was kind of a weird thing. Like, I never, I, I never found out what was the deal with that. It might have been something like it was prearranged and, and Mm -hmm. He had to fulfill some agreement or whatever, but I almost traveled to the Middle East with Steven Sanofsky is the new title of my autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just weird. Just a weird. Yeah. You would, uh, yeah, that would have been 
whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they they clearly missed an opportunity here. Uh, the the code name of Hololens 2.0 or whatever you want to call it is Sydney. They should have launched this thing in Sydney, Australia, but instead. Yeah. But um, Mary Joe told me that you were harassing Frank Shaw about that. Yeah. Well, harass <laughs> har- harass <laughs> might be strong. That he, was her word. I you know. And it was um. Like the invite came out and I said, hey, Microsoft's going to be at Mobile World Congress announcing whatever. And then Frank responded, I love Barcelona. And I said, it should have been in Sydney. <laughs> that was it. And um, I've been looking for an excuse to go to Australia for a really long time. Like yeah. a really long time. Yeah, I think, it is, I, I think you and I could have some fun with some kangaroos. Mostly us getting probably disemboweled by a kangaroo. Getting boxed or something. Yeah. Just like getting kicked in the groin by a kangaroo. <laughs> um. I mean, we're both done with the kids, so it should be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but that's another horrific flight, right? I mean, oh, yeah, the, I've, um, done a, I've done that one before. Yeah, so I've got, like I said, I went to New Zealand, but the only reason I could do it was because they put me in the, um, it was like a business class seat, and I actually had a bed. It was kind of in the nose of the plane. It was beautiful. Hmm. And uh, was it up? I didn't realize there was going to be a bed. So it was probably a I, 747. I don't, like, yeah, I don't know. But, the, the you know, the beds were kind of, you know, the seats or beds or whatever were kind of mm-hmm. angled. Toward, it was literally the nose. You could see the, it was, you know, the wall, that was the nose. Yeah. And um, it was wonderful, you know. It really, that made such a huge difference. And that's the thing with this Dubai thing. Like, um, I, I assuming everything else is okay, I mean, I'm going to be like, look, I, I, I don't mean to be a princess about this, but it's really far away. I'm a kind of a big guy, you know, I can't, I can't get sco- like this Norwegian thing. I'm going to be scrunched into it. Like we do have an exit row on the way back, but the way out, we don't, we're just in whatever, you know, whatever row. I mean, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be like this the whole time, but I'm going to Barcelona. It's okay. It's like, you know, seven, eight hours, whatever, but uh, 20 something hours, whatever that works out to mm-hmm. multiple flights. Maybe. I don't know. I can't, I just can't. You well. know, for everybody else, you can be looking forward to HoloLens 2.0. Uh, it'll have a Snapdragon 850 in it. I'm still hearing that's primarily going to be shipped towards the enterprise. I don't think it's going to be very inexpensive, considering that a mixed reality headsets are still going for two, three hundred bucks. I bet this thing is well over a thousand bucks. Oh yeah, but that's fine. I, honestly, yeah. I, I I think the thing about HoloLens that's really interesting is, um, I, it didn't seem like it had a point, you know, other than being incredible technology, right? And over the past, I guess it's been three years since they announced it, they've had a, a number of um, success stories. You know, these kind of vertical niches or whatever you want to call them where NASA. automakers use them to design cars. You know, NASA is an incredible example. Um, they've created a market for this thing. And I assume, like, I don't know any details about what, you know, what the differences are. I, there's been a lot of talk about Snapdragon processors, which to me makes tons of sense um, and whatever. But... Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking, I obviously do want the field of view thing to improve and I think it will. I think mm-hmm. that might've been the hold up on the last version, the one they were going to release. Remember we were at CS, was that two years ago when you received that info that they brought up Paul lens to, and I think it was Terry Myerson who said no to it because it wasn't, um, you know, different enough or whatever improved yeah. enough. Right. So I, I, I assume that will be part of it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, I've heard wider field of view, better battery life, um, yeah, Snapdragon 850 more than likely going to have some sort of 5G connection tie in. I don't know if we'll see that at launch, but it's definitely on the cards for that thing. Um, right. th- th- here's the interesting thing too. So when I was trying to poke around as I always do to figure out what, what this thing is, is one mm-hmm. person or was it two, maybe one or two people told me that there's so much going on at build that they didn't think they had enough room for HoloLens. <laughs> That's interesting. And that's part I, I, of the reason why oh, – well, there's two reasons. There's part of the reason why they might be doing it now. But there's also this thing with the military, right? They signed that massive contract. Mm-hmm. they got to start shipping that stuff. And so they don't really want to be shipping version 2 before they announce it as well. I'm not sure that announcing this before build helps matters too much. I mean, uh, build would be a nice stage, literally, mm-hmm. for announcing this kind of product. Um, Mobile War Congress is good, too. It's, it, that's yeah. not an issue. But this is still a big developer push. I mean – it's like it's not like they can ignore all that. I mean, right? Oh, I don't build. think they'll ignore it, but uh, I, I just don't. I think that I'm hearing the build's going to be interesting this year, and so uh, maybe, maybe they're just they trying to get ahead to of announce. it. Or the, I mean, at well, the end know, of the day, though, you think about it. I bet the development for HoloLens V2 is no different than V1. I mean, it's probably yeah. No, it should be an exact evolution. Same, be, roughly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, the last couple of 
uh, ignites, Microsoft has given the press this, what they, I think they call it the book of news. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly, I, it's, it's cool that they do it in a way, but it's a, it's just a bunch of one liners about whatever, right. Uh, this thing is getting this thing, you know, it's, it's, there's no detail to any of the little blurbs, but it does do a nice job of highlighting how much news there is, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, I don't know, book, but it's, uh, you know, 50 pages long, maybe, or whatever, you know, it's, it's a, certainly a big publication. Um, I wonder if build is going to work out that way as well. You know, like if they feel the need to push Hollands out of there as like a tier one announcement, I mean, that's actually big news in itself. I mean, that yeah. suggests there's going to be some major announcements, which I think there will be. I mean, yeah. windows lights going to be, you think this is at the, the debut? I, I think we will hopefully see that a build. Hopefully we'll know more here in a little bit. Mm. But uh, we've got that. The other th big thing that Microsoft did yesterday, um, and mind you, both of these things happened approximately 30 seconds after we ended the podcast yesterday because we had not much <laughs> to talk about. And we, we, right. we hang up the call and it's like, here's HoloLens 2.0. Here's, uh, we're separating search from Cortana. It's like, Jesus, couldn't you guys do, you know, give us but whatever. Right. Um, I, I think this is a huge deal. And yeah. Some people were like, nah, it's so they can make, it's going to make Cortana a more better assistant. And I. No, but, no. Yeah, the one thing yeah. you and I had learned, uh, I guess from Terry, uh, was that the problem with Cortana from a Windows 10 perspective is that it's developed outside of Windows. Mm -hmm. And so they have their own schedule. They have their own goals. You know, they have these other things they want to do that have nothing to do with Windows. And it made it difficult for that integration piece, you know, it was just, yep. you know, a new version of Windows 10 would come out. It's like, well, what do we got for Katana? It's like, well, nothing. They're not on the same release schedule. And um, I think that was a source of great friction uh, there. So I also think there's more to it than that. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, Cortana as a front facing, um, you know, assistant, whatever, I don't think it is ever going to take off. And, and, and the big wins that Microsoft has made, and there have been a bunch of them actually, are all behind the scenes. You know, like uh, Cortana is the actual back end tech behind the BMW voice uh, mm -hmm. assistant. You know, uh, no one knows that. <laughs> you know, no one using a BMW would know or care, but that's that's the way that is. And I think that's that's the story we've always been telling. You know, that's how they're going to see success. So I don't know. I, I view this as two things. I mean, one, kind of get it out of the OS because it's it's not an albatross but it's just you know voice control on the PC just hasn't really taken yeah. off you know yeah it really hasn't and I also think the other part is um, PC makers you know um, in the same way that uh, you know people can and Windows has controls for defaults you know default mail app default web browser whatever I, I've been saying for a while like there needs to be a control in there for default assistant you know Mm -hmm. And it's possible with all the PC makers adopting Alexa. Oh, you that jerk. Stop. <laughs> it shouldn't Sorry, go good. from the one word. That's stupid. But okay. Um, that there's been some call from Microsoft to make that more seamless. Sure. You know? Well, hey, um, we that, don't. That's what yeah, my they don't want first. an app. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Not just an app. Like we want to replace it. Yeah. You know? And the problem was previously to this and i could very much see hp coming to microsoft and being look we, you guys know that cortana isn't going to be that it, it's not going to be the amazon thing it's not going to be google assistant it's not going to be serial it's just they know that and so yeah. i can very much see hp going to microsoft being look we need a way to turn cortana off so we can use the amazon one which they've already shipped with new pcs before right but the problem was is that no matter how many times you still hit the windows search key it still launched it and so right. I right. could see I could see HP being like, look, we can make more money if you guys let us and mm -hmm. uh, give us an option. Yeah, and and you know for all the complaints around uh, crapware in Windows, which comes now from Microsoft, but also from PC makers, um, I there's been great consumer acceptance of Alexa. Uh, sorry, uh, the Amazon uh, assistant in particular, and. I think there is some call for it in that case. Mm -hmm. And especially like you said, I think the important thing is like PC makers are like, look, we make 13 cents on when we sell a PC. Could we, could we make 14 cents? Is, you yeah. know, is there a way you could make this a little better for us? And I think this is a fairly obvious way, especially when the thing that's built into there isn't really providing any value anyway. Mm -hmm. 
I'm also hoping this will allow the search team of uh, Microsoft to make search just, you know, a little bit better. Yeah, I, it's nice. funny. And yeah, let me see how does this work now. So in every, <laughs> yeah, they change. It's, God, it's terrible. Uh, they changed the UI in every version. You know, I don't know if you're, you're probably not running the Insider Preview on that PC, but, um, mm -hmm. oh, actually, right. This is the one that doesn't have it. <laughs> see, I disable all this stuff. Yeah, so search is, yeah, I hide, okay, so it's separate now. So search, you can hide search separately. You can show a Cortana button. That's all you can do. And when you hit start and just start typing, the thing that comes up is, it, look, it, it looks similar, but it, the display, the actual the, kind of the surrounding display is completely different yeah. uh, than it used to be. It's like its own little, it's like a separate search box mm -hmm. now, which is great. That's fine. You know? But God, this thing has been changing in every release. There you go. Fun, 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 fun times. Yeah. You got anything else for today, Mr. Thrat? Uh, no. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. It's been one of those weeks, you know. It is. How about uh, you? Well, I'm just, I'd like to give a shout out to Mother Nature. Uh, because. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This Saturday is going to be interesting. Real interesting. We are supposed to get an inch mm -hmm. of rain. Oh, <laughs> um, it's going to be, I, I don't know. Like they keep saying either we're getting an inch of rain or six inches of snow. One of the two, like that's. So we are supposed to get an inch of snow. I'm not sure about rain, but, um, ours happens overnight, Saturday into Sunday. I think, oh no, no, sorry. No, it doesn't. It happens tonight, uh, into tomorrow. Yeah. See, we woke up this morning to rain snow mix. Okay. Right. Yeah, so because this is Pennsylvania and because the school system here is so laughable, um, there, it is like a 100% guarantee that she'll have at least a delayed start tomorrow. 100%. Yeah, Saturday it's saying heavy rain mix. And it's going to be the high is 36 and the low is 15, um, yeah. which is somewhere the way, between. Uh, like, I don't know if you're looking at the Microsoft thing. I like the way they described it. It says, expect to wake up to snow. <laughs> It's like, and it's going to be cold enough like it's never actually going to rain. So it will just be snow for us. I wish we were getting snow because an inch of rain or whatever we're going to get on top of the about four inches yeah. of snow yeah. out there is going to make a. Yep. It's going to be a nightmare. The dog's not Actually, but we're supposed happy. to get. Well, it could be. I mean, we're supposed to get snow over the weekend, too. Yeah. See, that's it's probably the same thing that's going to hit my house. So, But I don't know. It doesn't say anything about amounts. I don't think it's going to be much. All right, folks, so that wraps it up for today. Tomorrow is Friday, I believe, based on my calendar, which means that we will be doing a live show at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Tune in for that. You can find us on throughout. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us in the United States. You can find us on the Internet. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful Thursday. We'll catch you next time. You can find us on a train. You can find us on a plane.